In this video, I wanted to take a moment to talk through our qualitative analysis lab, particularly the flowchart you're being asked to create. Now you're being asked to create one for cations and one for anions, and the procedure in the lab shows a detailed procedure for both identifying anions in a solution and identifying cations. Uh, but this is the first time we've really asked you to do a flowchart, and I'd like to share what this looks like when we're trying to communicate a strategy for solving essentially a chemical problem. In this case, it's a lab-based chemical problem where we're likely to have a set of unknown ions, and we need to figure out what they are by following a strategy of identifying qualitatively each of the possible ions that could be present. So you have a whole version of this in your lab, and I've taken three ions not included in it and developed a short procedure that might reflect what you would see in your um, lab procedure. And, and so it won't be everything the same, but this is, um, I'm just going to walk through how I would create a uh, flow chart for this specific procedure by way of example. So in this one, we're going to have just bismuth plus three ions, manganese plus two, and mercury plus two ions present in solution. We know we have them. And we're going to walk through a procedure that will show and identify qualitatively each of these ions. Then if I had a solution with one of these three ions, I could walk through these steps to figure out which one it was. So the first step of my um, procedure is to add six molar hydrochloric acid to the solution, and a white solid will appear. This will indicate that mercury, mercuric, mercury chloride, uh, which will be a, a white solid, will form. And this is essentially going to separate my mercury from my bismuth and my manganese. Um, and so the procedure tells me to centrifuge and decant to separate this and add more hydrochloric acid to see if more solid appears and then do that process again. The idea being we uh, pull out all of that mercury from solution um, and then we take the supernatant, which is the liquid that remains when we separate the solid and the liquid of the heterogeneous solution. And that supernatant is going to then contain only manganese and bismuth. So the first step of my flow chart will try to capture this procedural step. And I don't need to add all of the details. I don't need to talk about centrifuging and decanting. By creating the flow chart, I'm going to show that these two were separated. And we'll assume that they were separated in the best possible way, either by filtering or centrifuging and decanting, something like that. Uh, so this is then going to look like, at this point, this. So I'm going to create a flow chart that splits and shows what I've separated. I'll put my solid mercury chloride on one side, and then I'll put my bismuth and manganese on the other. And I'll use the aqueous phase to show that they're dissolved in water. So that's how they were separated by their phases. Now I'm going to include the reagents that I used to, did this, to do this without adding a lot of detail. And so the only thing I really added was this six molar hydrochloric acid right here. So I'm going to include that six molar hydrochloric acid in my flow chart that separates these two. So the way I would read this is, oh, you have three ions in solution and you add six molar hydrochloric acid. And from that, we see that you form a solid with the chloride ions with one of your cations and the rest just stay in solution. Now, I, I probably have some, some H plus ions, maybe even some chloride ions still in solution, but I'm not going to include those with the bismuth and the manganese because I'm going to focus this just on the ions that I'm testing. So I'm not going to include what I would call spectator ions, ions that are in excess or iron, ions that are not actually participating in the reactions. Okay, so the next step in my procedure, step three, it says to that supernatant, so the liquid that was isolated in step two, we're gonna add 3% um, hydrogen peroxide and then six molar uh, sodium hydroxide dropwise till it's basic, turns the litmus paper blue, and then heat that solution for several minutes and we'll see a dark solid. Now we're told this solid is the oxide and um, or hydroxide of the remaining ions. So um, in this step, we're actually not separating anything, but it will be important to the following step where we then take uh, acid, six molar sulfuric acid, and that acid will only dissolve the bismuth hydroxide and not the manganese oxide. So I'm going to include this step, even though it's not a separation. Um, and it's going to look something like this. All right, I add 3% hydrogen peroxide and 6 molar sodium hydroxide, and I get the hydroxide of bismuth and the oxide of manganese. 
Now, I'm not including that I'm heating it. I'm not including that the litmus paper turns blue. These are details that I don't need to include. I'm trying to, trying to limit the information I communicate so people can focus on what's important. And what's important is what are the transformations of the three ions I'm interested in, bismuth, manganese, and mercury. All right, so as we already said, we're going to add sulfuric acid. And the cool thing about this is it just dissolves one of these, the bismuth. And so we'll use that to separate our bismuth from our manganese. And so I'll write this again um, as it splits off. And I'm just going to add the six molar um, sulfuric acid um, to the reagents that creates this um, separation. And I'll put my solid in one, my manganese oxide, and my aqueous bismuth in the other. Um, now there's one last step. So right now what we would have is this white solid, that's our manganese oxide, and then a clear liquid. And we're like, pretty sure there's bismuth in there, if we knew there was bismuth in there from the beginning, but we should probably confirm there's actually something in there. And looking at a clear liquid doesn't really help us do that. So to confirm the bismuth is around, we're going to add base again, six molar sodium hydroxide, and that'll reform the hydroxide. But maybe it was just some extra manganese, uh, to really confirm it's bismuth, we're then also going to add 0.1 molar tin chloride to reduce that bismuth plus three, plus three ions in the bismuth hydroxide and turn that into elemental bismuth, which should be a black solid. So I'll do one more where I put, oops, sorry, uh, where I put the um, six molar sodium hydroxide and the 0.1 molar tin chloride, and then I'll show my bismuth solid. You know, honestly, it's a really great idea if this had said elemental bismuth, that will be a black solid. I can also include in my, um, what, uh, sorry, so I put in the phase, I put in what my product is, but I should also say that it's a black solid. I should give the color. Kind of like with my manganese oxide, it was white. And my mercury chloride, it was also white. And so I can include the color in the phase and the chemical formula of the product that identifies the ion. So I'm not putting in just mercury ions. I'm putting in what is the solid that really identifies it. And this is what I'm looking for for a flow chart. I'm hoping to see one like this for anions and then a separate flow chart for the cations. Please let me know if you have any questions.